Hey guys, I got a comment uh, on one of the fights we put out. I, I just got this comment and I said, you know what, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, the comment was on the Sugar Ray Leonard uh Donnie Lalonde fight. I believe that fight took place in 89 or 90. I might be off. <laughs> I might be off several years on that. I believe the fight was in 1988, actually. There's a lot of arguing going back and forth over that fight. Uh, Leonard got Lalonde to come down to 168 when really Lalonde was the light heavyweight champ at 175. There's a lot of bickering and banging on that, you know, in the comments section. Uh, I really don't get in really involved with that. I'll get involved on the personal videos like this that maybe we put out. But uh, when the folks come on and some of these fights that we've put up are just fights that my son Joe and I like and uh, and we want all people that have never saw these fights to see them and uh, to see how boxing was and we got fights from the 50s on up to maybe the mid 90s throughout the videos that we have and the videos of Joe training and sparring or whatnot. And me mouth yapping about the daily drama uh, living here in Columbia, South America. And, but we, uh, I got a comment today and the comment was, uh, now I'm paraphrasing this comment and I got it on that fight. And the gentleman was uh, not a fan going back and forth. Now, we get a lot of comments. It's like, oh, man, fighting boxing was so much better back in the day and whatnot. Uh, but this guy was really spelling it out. And I'm going to paraphrase what he put. He was, you know, boxers just stand there and other than pivoting, there's no no footwork going uh, out of anybody, really. Nobody's really dancing around and giving a jab and moving. And he was right about that. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, we, we practice boxing, so I'm not sitting here watching every fight that goes on in this day and age. Uh... I watch a lot of them. I like watching Bare Knuckle now, uh, thanks to uh, Danny Christie, who Joe just adores, and I do too. Uh, so we do, we're, we're watching a lot of that now. But I, I don't, I don't see anybody today in uh, gloved boxing, well, or any any type of fighting. <laughs> anywhere uh including the way i train joe uh that is really moving nobody's moving uh and you know understand with joe joe is a power puncher it's not really going to be beneficial for him to have a stick and move uh style but, but we need to get it on with that more often uh, because maybe there'll come a day when you got to do it, you see. Uh, so you need to be well-rounded, number one. But I was thinking about that post comment that I, I just read just a little while ago, and uh, I'm coming to the realization that I don't really think people are, I, these boxers are really 
uh, able uh, to move like they did back in the 70s and 80s and 60s. Uh, well, really in 50s and 40s, because a lot of people think that nobody was moving until Ali came about, and that's just simply not true. We had guys that could haul ass in that ring with their footwork well before uh, Cassius Clay, who became Muhammad Ali, came about. And But I'm coming to the realization that the, these guys can't stick and move for eight rounds, ten rounds, or twelve rounds. And back in the day, they would move for 15 rounds. You see, uh, a 12-round fight would be a non-championship fight. Uh, a championship fight would be 15 rounds. And your championship rounds uh, were the 14th and 15th round, not the 11th and 12th that they talk about so much today. So, uh, you know, you know, they say that the nutrition's better, you know, everything's so much better, yet nobody can move for 12 rounds. So I'm not sure I'm buying into that. Most of you guys that know me, uh, I'm old school. I don't want to hear none of this, all this new stuff, you know, uh, I have people tell me, well, you're old school, but I see Joe on the reflex bag a lot. And I'm like, well, let me enlighten you here a little bit. Uh, these bags are, have been around for many, many decades, many decades. Variations of the reflex bag has been around. There's nothing new coming around under the sun. Uh, uh, nothing new coming under the sun. Uh, these uh, vertical climbers and things, we had variations of these things back in the early 70s. They disappeared. So things are going out of fashion and then coming back in fashion like these cobra bags, as you call them today came back in, uh, but there's nothing new under the sun uh, with boxing, uh, but today I believe the, there's a lot of boxers out there that would be, oh my gosh, so, so uh, great that would be household names today if they had been trained to, and there was another guy, another thing that the gentleman said, you know, if they had been, if they were trained to move, and uh, I see so much of an emphasis on footwork, and, you know, I look at these guys, and they're like supposed to be the grandest mathematicians of the science of boxing, with this footwork, but uh, <laughs> uh, Cassius Clay, who became Muhammad Ali, uh, there's there's nobody out there today that could move in with Ali. Uh, you you can get into debates that the 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 heavyweight division is bigger or whatever. Uh, I get that, and I know where you're at, but I'm just telling you there's nobody that could uh, uh, stick with Ali. And, the, and you look at all this equipment that they have today, and it, it's, it's primitive. I mean, to, what we had back 30, 40, 50 years ago was a lot, a lot more uh, just archaic, primitive compared to what you got today. Uh, but fighters can't fight for 12 rounds. Um, 
So it's just food for thought. I would, uh, and trainers aren't training fighters. Uh, they are not conditioning. Uh, this is another thing that's just insane in this sport. Uh, you got a coach over here for this thing. You got a coach over here for this. You got somebody that makes the meals. You got a strength and conditioning guy here, cardio over here, footwork over here, uh, uh, striking over here. And uh, can't nobody, it's so, it's so much mess that it can't be wrapped in a package. And the guys that are the coaches, trainers today, uh, they've come from that mess. And I believe that's the result as to why that uh, these guys ain't moving around. They're, they can move around. They could move around. But uh, they, they won't move around long. And uh, young guys today, I'm just as sorry as I can be to tell you this, but uh, people hanging with uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran, uh, you just own up to Ali or Larry Holmes. No, there's, there's nobody uh, that compares. Uh, I often tell people uh, that there are many years in the 1970s where anybody in the top 10 at any given month during certain years in, in the 1970s would completely annihilate any heavyweight today, including the big giants. Uh, nobody's coming along to take down the giants uh, any longer, but Jack Dempsey did it. Muhammad Ali did it. Uh, many times uh, 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 I don't know I ain't pronouncing this name right Primo Carnero and I know I'm butchering that that guy was really huge and he got a licking uh, you, you, you you go back to Jack Dempsey and uh, oh my gosh I can't I, I can't remember the guy he beat for the, t the heavyweight title. Uh, but uh, uh, Jack Dempsey was looked like a kid in there with a big, strong man. This guy was physically huge, too. And uh, nobody's moving today. And I, I just, uh, yeah, you can call me crazy or whatever. And it is subjective because we'll never see. So we will really, logically, never really know. But I'm just of the uh, uh, grand opinion that, and I think highly of my opinion, and there's a lot of folks that have the same opinion as I, that uh, uh, these fighters of yesteryear would just annihilate these guys today. Um, we don't have a, a very explosive first-round heavyweights today. Uh, we don't have heavyweights that uh, uh, that can dance around and outla outlast a big guy because the smaller guy will be tired out too. Um, Usyk beating Joshua. Good news flash for everybody. Uh, Anthony Joshua. Uh, in my humble opinion has never really been a top tier fighter at any rate I believe Deontay Wilder would have licked him at any moment and would lick him today however I don't think Deontay Wilder is anything spectacular uh, in the heavyweight division we got the uh, Usyk I don't think he's done much. Uh, he beat uh, Anthony Joshua twice, whom I just, I, I know, is not a top-tier guy. And uh, 
uh, the, the, the best guy going today would be Fury. And, and I'm just convinced that most of the heavyweights back in the 70s would have just completely obliterated him. Uh, it, it, it's not like uh, he's the only giant champion we've ever had. And that used to be the name of the game, uh, being a giant slayer. And that's just lost to the sport. It's just lost to the sport. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Fury, or anybody else. Uh, these guys are great for today. Uh, but I, I just, there's nothing really going on today. Um, nothing. Nothing. Uh, you go back and you look at a lot of these older heavyweight fights from the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And uh, even Usyk, that, that you all think has great footwork and is a fast guy, just looks slow as hell and methodical in his movements. And uh, the damnedest thing is that a big guy uh, can't, Combat that. Uh, I mean, that's crazy too to me. Uh, of course, I'm, you know, I'm just talking of being in and out of boxing for I'm now 50 years now. And what I've seen personally and people that I was able to spend some time with that were champions or uh, people that trained champions and things like that. I'm just a little guy here, but. And a little guy in boxing, I'm nobody, but I do know what I see. I do know what I see. And it's just kind of perplexing to me that trainers today aren't training anybody to be able to move. Uh, really, a boxer just needs one or two guys on his team Uh this shit about preparing a meal, if you can't figure out what you need to eat and something ain't right with you, uh, you're too damn dumb to be, be world champion, in my opinion. Uh, it's all about calisthenics. Ali, they say, Ali, what'd you do today? Did you have a good workout? He'd say, yeah, I did 1,346 calisthenics. So you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to be a rocket scientist in the in the sport, see. And uh, uh, he was also credited, but uh, Sonny Liston was credited for this, and other guys going back said this too. But Ali gets the real credit because he he really publicized this this statement, although he wasn't the first to say it. They'd say, "How many?" Uh, Sit-ups or push-ups do you do? Uh, all these different exercises. And he would say, I really don't know because I don't start counting till it's hurt. And he didn't. He didn't really start counting till it was hurt. Uh, so, it, you... Uh, all this number and everything and all this stuff, you know, uh, I forget who it was, but somebody told a fighter, the fighter wasn't moving or uh, he didn't have the uh, conditioning to make it through 15 rounds. And I forget who it was, uh, but there's, there's videos about it online here on YouTube. But the trainer told him, said, go over there and start jump roping and I'll come get you when I want you to stop. And I think the guy came back like an hour or two hours later. Might have been three or four. And that and that, that, that fighter was still jump roping. And it was unreal. Nobody today would be able to be able to do this. And it, the reality of it is that story was probably embellished some because boxing is full of bullshit embellishment anyway. Uh, sorry, but 
It's just, it's all, every, all of us in this sport, it's a sport of embellishment. And the first guy that says, nope, I've never embellished nothing that's in the fight game, I'm going to say, great, because you're probably the only one on earth. You know, I ain't going to pick a fight with a person or argue with them, uh, but I'm not really going to believe that at all. And uh, no more than my uncle who played Major League Baseball or my cousin in uh, the MLB. Uh, everybody's embellishing, you know, in sports. Uh, but I have no doubt that it was literally longer than anybody would be doing it today. And hell, uh, I just got told the other day, I'm not sure if I believe it, but that Malik Scott's got Deontay Wilder jump roping. Because, hell, he was just like, I don't like it, I ain't going to do it. And, you know, maybe a couple of hours a week doing rope work would have been the difference uh, between him and uh, Fury. I mean, I don't know. But I know it's not benefiting him not to do it. And I was excited when the gentleman told me that Malik Scott had him jump roping. And I forget who told me that, but the person that told me that volunteered that up to me because they knew I had been saying, and I, and I guess they called it online, uh, bitching Wilder out because he lost the belt that we had in the United States and uh, the, the only one we had. And, uh, and I, I knew that he wouldn't jump rope. And I'm like, damn, you know. And you got to have a trainer that's you. That guy's going to have to be the boss, not the boxer. Uh, there's degrees to that. You win a world championship and you've done defended it 10 times. You know, maybe you can start being, being the boss. But, uh, I mean, I'm not a Dundee fan and I don't think Dundee knew hardly the hell of a thing about boxing other than sucking the blood out of fighters. But even Ali would listen to Dundee. Uh, Sonny Liston listened, listened to his trainers. Uh, all these guys. It's just today that these... Now, we had guys get up and they had they moved around. Uh, but a lot of the times, not all the time, but probably the majority of the times, when a fighter... Uh, had a change of trainers or managers uh, or the combination of the both, uh, it was because the fighter was let go because they weren't doing what the hell they were told to do. Uh, that's, that's generally in the past what happened. Today, these guys, they uh, give you another case in point. He's a boy I like. He quit in the fight with Tank Davis. That boy just damn well quit. I know he got hurt, but he quit. Uh, we all get hurt. Uh, and that's Ryan Garcia. And uh, I don't mean to be ugly in saying this. I pulled for him in this last fight. I'm glad he won. However, uh, it's self-apparent to me his ass ain't training worth the shit either. And I don't like it. And I'll say something about it. And if I saw his daddy out here or uh, uh, Derek James is training him now, I'd tell Derek James, well, you, you got to start hollering at this kid. You got to tell this kid you ain't going nowhere. You got to stay with me. I'm the boss. Do what the hell I tell you to do. And if he don't, he ain't going to win no championships. And, uh, that's just my opinion on things. And uh, uh, we got great boxers today. We got wonderful trainers today, but uh, great and more power to them. But I haven't, I haven't uh, seen no Fords, uh, Millers, and I can't even remember people's names, but there's a lot of names I could go down. I'm not seeing... Uh, trainers like they were back in the day and uh, 
And it's just as simple as that. But uh, and we're gonna I'm gonna tell Joe we're gonna start hitting uh, uh, cardio a whole lot, which he does a whole lot anyway. Uh, we're still working on the they're still getting some equipment set up in the, the gym up here and they are repairing about all the equipment and servicing it still. Uh, so when all of that's completed and, uh, but Joe's been doing dumbbell work and a lot of rope work. He's always doing rope work and set ups and push ups and a lot of that, but, uh, we just haven't had access to the speed bag or heavy bags. And that's about it. Cause it's what we use anyway, uh, nothing secretive going on about what we do. We just do a lot more than everybody else does. Uh, at his age bracket now, you have to keep in mind he's still in school. Uh, but he's out working half the damn professionals out here. I know because I know what they've done. I've been around it, and I know what the hell's going on, and I know what people did, and I know what they do today. In the attitudes of a lot of the fighters uh, show that to be true. And... Uh, the root cause is not coming from the boxers. The root cause is coming from the trainer slash coaches. Everybody wants to be a basketball coach in boxing today. That's why I just, I'm no offense to anybody that calls themselves a coach, but I, I don't like to be called that. And I'll tell somebody in a second, I, I you know, this ain't no game. I'm not coaching. Uh, I don't even really consider myself a trainer. I'm just working with my son and other kids. Uh, I just feel like I can't qualify myself to what I've been around in the past and what I've seen in the past. But I aspire to be like what I've seen, what I worked around, and what I was around. I'm in trying to inspire myself and get there. I'm nowhere near there. But guess what? I ha I don't see a championship, a champion, a world champion trainer today. You can go down the whole damn list of them. And I honestly, uh, other than a few technical things, I don't think nobody could do as good a job as I could do. I, I really don't. And sure as hell not in the strength and conditioning and cardio and all this. And sure as hell not on developing punching power. That's another myth out there. You're either born with it or you think, yeah, no, you, uh, if you're born with it, you can make it great, excellent, great, great, great. Uh, but if you've got weak punching power today, there is a hell of a lot of things you can do to improve it. And these basketball coaches out here, they're not showing these guys what to do to improve that. And it's just beyond me. You know, it's not not a lot of rocket science going on to get a boy to punch harder and help them along and teach them and teach them leverage and uh, positioning and and, and strengthening their body up without slowing them down with a bunch of heavy muscle tissue. Uh, but I don't know. That's my rant for today. If anybody watches this, we don't have but a few people that uh, really listen to my old bud anyway. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect anybody to. I consider my own self boring. Uh, but to those that you do listen, that do listen, uh, if you don't want to listen to my old butt, go listen to an old fella. Because uh, sitting and learning and being taught by somebody that's the same age as you or younger or uh, still trying to be hip and fashionable in any way, shape, or form probably ain't the, the, the road you want to go down in the fight game. Uh, there needs to be more Mickeys out there. Uh, we need more mix and uh, a 
less of a lot of other guys. We, we, we need aggressive trainers today, and we don't have that. But God bless all you young boxers out there. God bless all my friends that will come up on this and see, see it. Uh, Lord have mercy on you if you sat here through my rambling. Uh, God will love you if you've done that. And love you if you didn't, if you just caught the end here. And we hope everybody, I'll keep mentioning this throughout the month. We wish all of you to have a blessed, blessed Christmas and New Year. Uh, we pray for everybody that ain't going to be able to be around their families during that time. Uh, that are hurting and in heartache. Uh and things like that. And uh, I'm out there. I will, if somebody needs some help or wants to talk to somebody, uh, you know, I went through this for so many years, uh, the heartache of my father passing and when I was a boy and missing him every year. And I still do. I said, you know, bro, uh, if you if you're a good son, you'll never grow out of missing your daddy. It's just as simple as that. So, and there's a lot of losses going on. Uh, I'm training one kid. He's, uh, his mother died when he was 11, uh, like my dad did when I was 11. And, uh, it's just a hard time. And, uh, but at any rate, I quit babbling. We wish you blessings and we pray that you're not alone and that you don't feel alone. And we, I pray that my king, who is Jesus, the king of the kings, uh, can give you a sense of fullness, calmness, and easiness during these holidays. And we love you all.